David Greenwald, how to clean the WordPress database. David Greenwald used to be a professional music critic and has interviewed Radiohead, Garth Brooks, and Vinny Cent. Now he's super excited about making WordPress run tens of milliseconds faster and keeping websites about 50 cent for crashing. He's a freelance WordPress developer and performance engineer in Portland, Oregon. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. You're actually going to want to go take a look at that because I have some uh, code examples that you can take home. It's a cheat sheet of things you can bring home to your database and run your own detective work. Uh, so here is a link to that, actually, if you want to check that out. And we're going to run through some examples, but this is a full list. Um, so there's that link. These slides will be up online as well. So this is Passion of the Weiss. This is a music blog run by my friend Jeff down in LA. Um, this is a great site. He's been doing it for many years, has a lot of readers. I think he gets about 100,000 unique visitors per month, something like that. So pretty good traffic, uh, not quite enough to break the internet. This was originally a Kim Kardashian photo, which we took out for copyright reasons, so this have to imagine. Um, but so with you know a few thousand visitors a day, most websites should be able to handle that. Jeff should not have been having any problems with this site. Instead, his site was crashing almost every day, and this went on for years. This was a constant problem. So here's some of the things that he tried to do to fix it. He switched from his cheap shared host to a faster VPS server. Not great. He thought he was being hacked, so he set up Cloudflare, set up DDoS protection, all that good stuff. Not super helpful. And he finally thought, oh, maybe it's the database. I don't know what that is, but I'm a music blogger, but let's see if I can deal with that. And so he set up the WP Optimize plugin and tried to clean his database. And this continued to not get great results. So eventually, I got in touch with Jeff and took a look at it, and we found out it was the database. And the issue was, his database was full of trash. It was full of junk, all left over from a Facebook share counter plugin that he deleted in like 2013. And it had just left all of its stuff behind in his database for years. So here's before I cleaned it up, I had about 252 megabytes of stuff sitting in the options table of his database. And we'll talk about what that is. Uh, after two megabytes. So that's a lot better, obviously. Uh, and here's why this matters. So the options table saves all the settings for your WordPress site, for your plugins and for WordPress core as well. And so if you, uh, part of that are things that auto load, they load automatically with every page view so that anyone coming to your site gets all the right settings. Some things only load conditionally when they're needed to, but a lot of stuff that's in this table is automatically loading. So every time someone is coming to a page of Jeff's site, they're getting all this data, this 252 megabytes of data. So what would happen was he would tweet a link to his site, five people would look at it, and it would overload his server, which had one gigabyte of RAM. So that's not really the position that you want to be in, where you can't have six people on your website. So what we can learn from Jeff's story is that database problems are sneaky. They're not the first thing that people are looking for. Uh, they're expensive. You're probably going to upgrade your server, your hosting, because you think that's the real problem, which it may not be. Um, and it's bad for business and traffic, because if your site is crashing, if it's slow, these are things that hurt you in Google results, and they hurt you with your customers. Um, so if this is a problem that you can solve for your clients, it's going to be a big win for them financially uh, and for you uh, financially. So what is the WordPress database? Raise your hand if you think you sort of know what it does. That's great. That's awesome. That was better than the Portland talk last week. Uh, so all your WordPress content lives in the database. Uh, basically what happens is someone comes to your website, there was a great discussion of this in uh, Zach's caching talk from yesterday, if you caught that, but somebody comes to your website and WordPress goes and talks to the database and says, I need the information that goes on this blog post. The database says, here you go. WordPress feeds that into your theme and then it makes a, an HTML page to serve out to your visitor. 
Uh, so it basically looks like this. Uh, the dog is WordPress, the pig is MySQL, and that tennis ball is your blog post. So we need the dog to get the tennis ball to bring it back to you as a visitor to this website. So database queries, which is a search uh, for this information, they take time, and then they use data, which fills up your RAM, fills up your, uh, your server's uh, memory. Uh, so we want to really optimize both of these. We want things to run fast. We want them to use as little data as possible so we can have uh, lots of people come to our site and not crash when six people come. So what is a database? Just to scale out a little bit. Um, a database, every WordPress website has a database. Uh, they organize their data in tables. And uh, those tables are basically, you can think of it as a spreadsheet. It's storing information in rows and columns. So the way that's set up in WordPress is your rows are for each individual item. So blog post one, blog post two, blog post three. Each one of those will be a row in your database. Uh, and then you have columns that break up those rows. So you would have your uh, post title, your post content, your post excerpt. So this is how the database organizes things. And here is what WordPress comes with. It's a whole bunch of tables. Um, just going to talk about a few. Uh, posts, comments, users, those are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, terms is where your categories and your tags live. Uh, options, like we said, is where your settings are. All the settings across the site. And plugins like to dump a lot of things in there. Uh, page builder tools that might come with your theme. We'll put a lot of stuff in there. And also, uh, temporary data uh, called transients can also live in that options table. So that's really the most important for performance and where we really want to look. Uh, the meta tables, um, most tables come with a meta table, and what that means is if you're running advanced custom fields, if you're running a social media plugin, anything that would add new columns to, a, to your post table, instead of going into posts, that extra information goes into the meta table. So again, plugins that add extra information, that's all going to go in post meta. And uh, those are the two tables that we are really looking for to see extra stuff getting generated in our database, which isn't supposed to be there. So here are a couple of good database guides you can check out to learn a little bit more. Uh, Deliciousbrains.com and premium.wpmudev if you want to get a little bit deeper into how this stuff works. So plugins also add their own tables. Uh, Workbench is here this weekend. Thank you, Workbench. Uh, we're from our sponsor. Uh, they add a bunch of tables to your database. Uh, so does Yoast, so does WooCommerce. A lot of plugins you're probably using are adding tables to your database. This is actually really good because it means the information is organized. It's not sitting in your post meta table. So it's going to be better organized and a lot faster. Uh, but still, we have to make sure we are looking for bad actors and making sure that plugins are not adding extra data, bad data that we don't want on our site. So you might see, you notice that in our list of the WordPress tables, they're all WP underscore. This is the default for WordPress. Your host might have it be different. You can also change this yourself. But just so you, in case you run into anything weird, uh, that's why. That's what the prefix is. So what actually causes database problems? Um, a large number of rows and a large data size of the row content, like we saw with Jeff's site, where he has 250 megabytes of stuff. Uh, MySQL, the database software that we mostly all use, uh, is really good at searching through thousands of rows. That is its job. So we can be less concerned with having a lot of rows and more concerned with the data. Uh, and let me show you how that works. If you have Pride and Prejudice in a blog post, that's going to be 700 kilobytes of information. Whereas if you put my tweet in a blog post, that's 0.09. So if you have 5,000 blog posts and each one is Pride and Prejudice, you're going to have a much bigger database than if you had 5,000 tweets uh, in your database. So we really want to be conscientious about the data that we're using. And another reason for that is not just performance, uh, but also it's taking up room on your server, which you were paying for. So if you have an account with a managed host like Flywheel or WP Engine, you are paying for every gigabyte of storage. Uh, it's not an unlimited amount of space. And if you have somehow a database that balloons out to 250, 500 megabytes, uh, you only have five gigabytes to use, that's something else to be aware of. Even if it's not causing a performance burden on your site, it's still taking up space. So we really want to be conscientious about that. So how can we tell if our database is slow? This is the fun part. Speed tests. Uh, so here's a couple tools that are very accessible. You can get more into 
uh, New Relic and some other things that are high end, but just to get started, these are great. Bikecheck.com, tools.pingdom.com, and GT Metrics. This is Bike Check, and this gives you a measure of what's called time to first bite, which is how long it takes for someone to click on your website and for some other things to happen, and then for the WordPress dog to go talk to the database pig, get the tennis ball, and bring it back to you and have the page ready to go. So we're looking for uh, what's called the wait time, which is how long the server is doing that uh, turnaround and actually getting the information to make the page. So in this example, 29 milliseconds, that's super good. We don't have a problem with this website. Uh, Ping them will give you more information. This is called the waterfall. This is a whole rundown of all the information, all the data that's loading on your web page. So the page itself, and then all your JavaScript, CSS. Uh, in that top bar, you can see it's broken into the steps of our time to first bite. And again, we want that yellow bar, uh, the wait time. Uh, so we just want that little sliver to be really fast. So uh, wait time is part of time to first bite, as you can see there in the waterfall. Um, bite check will break it out, but if you want to do more of a bigger speed test, you would use Pingdom or uh, GT Metrics. So wait time should be, Google says it should be under 200 milliseconds. Um, in real world scenarios, you can absolutely get it under 200. You can get it to 100. Um, if, you have, if you're on a good server, you have a clean database, um, this is something you can very realistically shoot for. Um, something to remember is as your site scales and you have more traffic, that will put more strain on the server, more RAM, more CPU, and so things will go slower. So you really want to make sure it is as fast as it can be before your server is under load and you're having a big traffic day, and all of a sudden you're going from 100 milliseconds to 300 to 500 and things start to get really slow. So slow wait times uh, can be caused by several factors. Your server, it could be old hardware, it might not be on a solid state drive. Uh, an old PHP version, a lot of us are still on 5.6 or 5.3 or who even knows. Uh, we should all be on 7.0 or better. Uh, or the slow database. And so in Jeff's case, he had just moved over to a fast server. So we knew he was on a move to DigitalOcean. So we knew he had a good server. We knew he was on PHP 7.1. So no problems there. So when I was doing my speed test, you can do process of elimination. See, that's slow wait time. It's probably because of the database. So that's something to solve. Uh, if you are on slower hosting, you definitely want to upgrade. It's not a lot more money. It's really worthwhile. Uh, and then you can do these tests and see if you think your database is going to be a problem. So caching is probably something that you have heard of. Who's heard of caching? Raise your hands. OK, so we all know about caching. I'm sure it's running on your website. That's great. You should absolutely do that. Uh, but caching is a band-aid for the database because what happens is it, it, uh, the cache page is built from the database information, and then we skip right over it every single time after. So if you have a slow database and you're caching on, it's fine, you're never going to know uh, until you do. So you always want to test with caching off. Make sure you're really getting the correct results from the database and not from your cache. One more slide about that. Basically, uh, this is Zach's talk in one slide. Zach's talk from yesterday, which is great. Caching builds your HTML web pages once and then saves them for future use. So we don't have to talk to the database anymore. Uh, it makes wait time super fast because you are no longer doing that step. You're ready to go. Uh, but it is not a fix for dynamic pages and pages that have to be generated on the fly. So if you were a logged in user, if you were on the back end of your site, none of that's cached. Uh, if you were running e-commerce, that's not going to be cached. If you have a site with thousands of pages, that can't all be cached. Um, I have one client who does have about three or 4,000 blog posts. And if you wanted to cache all of that, you know, that's not something that would be very realistic. Uh, so if you do want to do some caching, if you're not using it, I like Cache Enabler, I like WP Rocket. Those are great plugins, really easy to use. Uh, but again, this is not going to be a fix for all situations, and we want to make sure we are testing our database, learning about it. So the most important tables for cleanup for performance uh, are going to be the options table, because that's loading every time, uh, the post meta table, because that's where plugin data goes to die, and then also posts and comments can get out of hand, and of course, any plugin tables that get added, we really want to be policing. So here's some database detective tools that we can use to start getting into this. Uh, some WordPress plugins we're going to look at, and also SQL. Uh, ultimately, you have to write some code if you really want to get into advanced cleanup and do it yourself. No plugin can do it for you, because you have to be the one to say, I think this is from this plugin that I don't use, and I need to delete this specific thing. And let's find out how much information that that is using. And we're going to learn that today, uh, if we don't run out of time here. Uh, and you can also go on. You can do any of this in PHP MyAdmin. This is a, 
uh, MySQL tool that probably is on your server. It's certainly on cPanel if you're using that. Um, if you don't have access to that, you can go on the command line and log into MySQL, and then you can do any of the same code. But you probably have phpMyAdmin, you probably have another similar tool that you can use to interact with your database. Uh, you don't want to be doing this in the WordPress dashboard with a plugin because that leaves you really vulnerable to hacking. You want to be doing it with an outside tool. So before you do anything, always back up your database because as soon as you delete something, if you're not 100% sure what that's going to do, you want to have your backup ready to go. I use WP Migrate DB. It's a free plugin. Uh, it does have a pro version, but it works great free. It's super reliable. Um, just save your database, do something, save another copy, make sure you've got that database backed up, ready to go before you do anything. So here is a great tool called Server Status. This is a plugin from Google Busy, and this can help us start to understand what is going on on our server if we don't have any information about it. Uh, don't know if that's too small to see, but it gives us some good information like disk space and database size. So we can see here we have uh, 9 gigabytes of space on our server. We're only using 27 megabytes of our database, so that's great. Uh, you might have a situation where you have a 2 gigabyte database on a 5 gigabyte server, and that can tell you, well, it's time to clean the database or upgrade the server, get some more room. Um, so that's a great place to start, just looking at the size of everything. You can get your PHP version, your MySQL version, make sure your PHP is up to date and you're on 7.0. I think uh, some hosting companies are rolling out 7.3 uh, and 7.2 is supported by WordPress right now. Might not be supported by some of your older plugins, but certainly most things should be uh, ready for 7.0 at this time and you should be safe to update. So WP Optimize we talked a little bit about. It doesn't solve every problem, but it can solve some really easy ones that we can knock out. Uh, so when we look at this plugin, this gives us basically some information about our database. We can get the records, which is uh, what they call rows, and also the data size, which is our, our megabytes that are being filled up by uh, Facebook share counter plugins that from 2013 that never got erased. So this is a really great time to just use some common sense and say, what are the biggest tables as far as rows? What are the biggest tables as far as data? Uh, I have 300 posts on my blog. Why do I have 30,000 rows in the post table, right? Or if you have uh, your post option or your WP options table, you really want that to be as small as possible. It should just be one or two megabytes, uh, maybe about 500 rows. WordPress comes with about 250 rows of built-in options. And so once you start getting to 1,000, 2,000, 5 megabytes, 10 megabytes, 252 megabytes, uh, that's a time when you want to go in and really see what's going on. So we can look at, use some common sense, learn what we, use what we've learned about our database to see what we need to start uh, owning up. So some things that WP Optimize can do, the first thing you want to do is clean your post revisions. Anytime you hit save or publish on a post or page in WordPress, what that is doing is saving a version of that post, uh, which is awesome because you have every version you've ever uh, published on your site, but if you have 5,000 Pride and Prejudice blog posts and you have 30 copies of each one, you now have a gigantic database. Uh, so this is something that you should go in and clean every so often, make sure you, especially on an older site, you really want to make sure you're cleaning that out and you don't have five years of drafts from your 5,000 blog posts that are all saved up and you don't need anymore. Uh, you can clean out spam and trash comments, that's a one-click thing, that's great to do. One thing that this plugin does that we don't need to do anymore is clean out expired transients, uh, which is temporary data that can be generated by like WooCommerce sessions and things like that. And WordPress since version 4.0 will actually clear that out for us, so we probably don't need to do that anymore. Uh, and the other thing is checking the optimized database tables at the top, and that will just empty the recycle bin basically and make sure you actually clean out your trash and you can get a clean database. So this is spring cleaning, basically. You want to look in on this, make sure you're doing it every so often, um, but it's not going to solve advanced problems, it's not going to delete old plugin data. It does have a setting for uh, orphan relationship data and orphan post metadata, which means if you have a post, it has some post metadata, maybe somehow that post got deleted and it didn't delete its five rows of metadata. So that's something you can clean out here, but that's not going to be a major problem in general because WordPress does a good job of cleaning that stuff out. Um, and what this plugin cannot do is look at orphan data from the plugins. So that's something that we have to do by hand, which we're going to do um, in just a couple of slides. So advanced cleanup. This is the stuff that humans have to do. I don't know if there are any advanced plugins which can do this. So we're going to get into it right now. 
Uh, we're going to look at the options table and post meta. And of course, plugins tables are also what we want to make sure we are uh, keeping an eye on. So what causes some problems? Bad active plugins currently on your site, which are just filling up your database you didn't even know. Uh, abandoned data from old plugins that you haven't used since 2013, which are slowing your site to a crawl. Really want to make sure you get that stuff out. And then another edge case I found is import data. So if you brought your site over from Blogger in 2010, like I did, um, I found all the stuff that was supposed to go into posts, which did, also went into post meta. So I had like an entire extra copy of my site sitting in post meta. Um, not a big deal, but something that should be cleaned out. It doesn't need to be in your database. Uh, so a lot of these issues are for older sites. If you have a site that's been around for a few years, you have more older information, uh, older code from when WordPress was not as wonderful as it is now, of course. Uh, older plugins, you probably used a lot of different plugins and deleted them. So if you have a site that's two months old, you're not going to have a lot of these problems. If your site or your client site is five years, eight years old, these are things that you really want to go through and be looking for. So facts only. Uh, most serious database issues are because of plugins. So that's what we want to focus on. If you're running 20 different plugins on your site, your client has all this stuff that's been sitting there since 2012, they don't know what it is, we really need to go in and see what's going on. So some problem plugins to watch out for. Uh, social media share counters. Uh, anything that is saving data for every post on your site, uh, that's a whole, that's a one row in your database for every single post. Uh, popular post counters, same kind of thing. They might be saving all the popular posts from every day for as long as you've been running the counter. So you might have five years of data sitting there. Uh, logging, uh, WordFence uh, keeps a live log of every IP address that hits your website as part of its security measures. You don't need that live traffic on. Turn that off and you will not be writing to your database and storing all that extra information. Uh, and then search program, search plugins like uh, Relevancy, that creates a database in your database so that you can have uh, more stuff indexed and better search results. That's really great, but it also takes up a lot of space. So I'm not saying not to use these things. I'm saying make sure you're aware of what kind of load these plugins are having on your site. Maybe you do need to upgrade your server so you can use the plugins you want to, and just be aware of what's going on in there. So something really important to do uh, is vet your plugins. Uh, WordFence is a great example because what that does is you have to go all the way through the 5,000 options and check a box that says, please delete my database stuff, all my information, when you delete this plugin. If you don't do it, it leaves its tables in your database forever if you delete that plugin. And that's something that you have to go in and turn on. It is not a default. So you really want to go through the options of your plugins, make sure you are checking that box so it doesn't leave stuff behind. Um, you want to do a test delete and see if it, if it doesn't have that option, if it is going to take its stuff with, you, with it. Uh, I think WP Optimize, I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually clean up after itself and it will leave a couple of rows in your database, which is hilarious because it is a cleanup plugin. I'm not 100% sure it still does that, but it did before. Uh, so these are plugins that you're going to be using on these sites for years, right? So it's worth it to take 15 minutes, put it on a test site, make sure you know what it's doing and you give it, uh, you give it a good examination before you actually give it to the client and get going on your site. So let's do some actual cleaning. Um, our goals today, our mission, if you choose to accept it, uh, we want to get the options table under 500 rows if we can, uh, under 2 megabytes, especially for the parts of it that are auto-loading. Um, and then we want to drill down into any other big tables with SQL queries and find the junk database table, find the junk uh, plugin data and get rid of it so it is not taking up memory, taking up space that it can be using for faster results. Uh, so this is an SQL query. And we do have some time, so we're going to try to teach you all a little bit of SQL. Who's written SQL before? That's amazing. I was expecting two hands. That's great. So you're all set. Okay, so basically the magic of uh, getting into your database is the second function here. We have our select statement, so we're going to do a search. Uh, we're going to count everything as an auto-load row count, so we're going to get a count of all the rows in the options table that are auto-loading. And then this big thing that takes up bunch of lines here, round, sum, length, and cat. What we're doing in there is getting, uh, we're adding up all the data of each column in the table, and we are going to get that data for the rows that we're looking at. So you can apply this function to any table in the database. You just have to change the columns. So in case of the meta tables, they are, uh, the options table has option ID, option name. In a meta table, it would have a different list. Same for the post tables. But all you have to do is put in your 
the column names of the table uh, so you can get the total information, the total megabyte uh, data that it's using. And then we can do our search. We can do our where autoload equals yes. Uh, so we're going to run this live right now. I'm going to switch over to the computer. So I use uh, MAMP to do my local development. That comes with phdmyadmin. Uh, any tool is going to give you a pretty similar setup. Um, but basically, this is a database, a client database. As you can see, it has about 5 million tables in here from all the plugins that they've been using. Um, so this is a good way to get started. You can say, am I using? What is this underscore RG? Uh, the prefix is where you're going to get the information on what plugin this is. And sometimes you have to do some Googling. But if you know what, what uh, tables are supposed to be there already, you can look in and say uh, ECPT. That's not something that goes with WordPress. EWWW. Oh, I know that's an image plugin. So you can look and see what are the extra tables that are getting added to your database. And if you did your vetting, you already know. Um, but if you see anything in here that's a plugin that you don't use anymore, you can back up your database and then you can just delete it and you save yourself that space. So if this site was no longer using the EWWW plugin, you can just check this box and go all the way down to the bottom, keep scrolling all the way down. And then with that selected table, we can just hit drop and delete it, and then it's gone. So again, back it up before you start dropping tables. You don't want to break anybody's butt Um So that's the first thing that we can do, and we can also, uh, can we see, we can make this a little bigger? Is that better? Uh, we can see how many rows we have. We can see what the size is. So if we do the number of rows here, we have 400,000 rows in post meta. So there is a lot of plugin junk in there that we can probably get rid of. And then we can see here top 10 daily. Top 10 is a plugin that this site is using. And I happen to know that they have some settings to say cap the data 30 days and then clear it out, or cap it in a week and clear it out. If you don't do that, it stores it forever, which is why we have 100,000 rows instead of 20,000. So you can look at this and start to see where the problems are. You can look at the size. Uh, and again, this is where I really want to look. So we have 68 megabytes of stuff in posts. Um, we've already cleaned out, in, in, for this particular site, I know the revisions are clean. And you can't do a whole lot about this table if it's already been cleaned out because your posts are your content. You can't have less content on your website. So that's something you have to live with. And we just have to clean everything out around it. Um, so let's do some code on this and see what's going on in here. And I definitely do not have this all memorized. So we're going to copy paste a little bit, and then I'm going to explain what I'm doing. So let's get a look here. And so you would click the SQL tab so you can run actual code in here. And um, so what we're going to do here is uh, select a count, and then you can say as, and this is just going to be the name of your information so you know what it is, uh, from the WP options table. In this case, they use a different prefix. So we actually have to change our SQL here. So when you take these home, make sure you are matching it to the actual prefix on your site. So we're just going to do I-U-J-A-K-E-L. Um, and we're going to look for anything that matches transient. So uh, if you use the like keyword in your query, um, that means it's not going to do an exact match, but it's going to look for a partial match. So that allows us to look for keywords or terms within uh, our information. Um, so we'll hit go. On that, we have exactly one auto loading transient in the options table. So this options table is clean. That's great. If you get 2,000 rows, uh, then it's time to go in and probably delete some of those and figure out what is generating those transients. It's probably WooCommerce. It's probably an old plugin uh, that left them behind. Uh, so let's find something a little bit more interesting on this site. Um, let's go into the options table and see what's going on in here. So we can just hit browse here. And a great way to get started is just to look at the database. Uh, just put it out to a couple hundred rows. And I know that the options table starts with about 250 rows. So you can scroll down and uh, see what's on the next page. And so here we have WP SEO sitemap. And again, we're looking at the prefix here in this option name. So I know WP SEO, that's not WordPress. That's something a plugin added. You can keep going down. And here we get ECPT. That's from a plugin. Uh, TubePress, that sounds like a plugin also. So again, this is like where you have to do it yourself, and Google is your friend, trying to figure out what plugin and what data do I need it anymore. This can't really be automated. You have to go in and look at it and make some decisions. 
So uh, I know one, another one that's in here is uh, Pyre, and I think that's from a page builder. So we can, let's, let's check that out. Let's see what information we can get about Pyre. So I'm going to go back to SQL, run this query, and we can just hit go. So we have 45 rows uh, from this Pyre plugin. And so if we're not using that anymore and we want to delete them, we can just switch that over from a select statement, which is a search statement, uh, to a delete statement, Oop. SQL. And something to do first is always uh, run the select first. Don't delete something without knowing what you're deleting. So we did our search. We know exactly what we're going to get rid of. Uh, we can hit simulate, make sure we're getting the right thing. Mash rows 45, that's what we got in our previous test. So that's great. Uh, let's just delete it from this database. Why not? Do you really want to do it? Sure, we're ready to go. Okay, great. We deleted 45 rows from our database. Um, so let's go into the post meta because that is a little bit trickier. And here, this is where we have about 400,000 rows. Um, and one thing we can do in here, post meta gives you the meta key. So in the options table, uh, every option is going to have different value because each one is you know, one option. Whereas in post meta, every one is going to be a particular uh, a key for a value that goes on every post, right? So if you have uh, this underscore WP attached file, which might be the picture, the featured image, or something like that, every post is going to have a meta key with WP attached file, and the value will change. So if you have 5,000 posts, you would have 5,000 of this particular key. So what we can do is see um, what are the top meta keys, what, what meta keys are taking up space, and that will tell us what plugins are causing us problems. This is how you clean up post meta. So we're going to use this gigantic statement over here. So what we're doing here is we're doing a search of meta keys. We're going to count them. Uh, we're going to get a sum of all the data by using the column names, all concatenated <laughs> and measured here. We're going to group them by the meta keys. We're going to get an order list. Uh, we're going to order them by the size in descending order, and then we're going to limit that to 10, because otherwise it's going to give you your 500 different meta keys. Uh, so it's a good idea when you're doing these kinds of searches to put in a limit so that your database isn't just spinning over and over. You can see what the top five, the top 10 are. That's where all your problems are going to be anyway. You're not going to have 20 different things that are all causing a problem, I hope. Usually it's one or two plugins. That's going to be 80% of your problem, and you can just get rid of that. So let's see what information we get here. Uh, that's bad. Oh, okay. So we got an error because what did I do wrong? Oh, that's bad. Oh, this worked ten minutes ago. Let's get rid of that and see if that helps. Also, a problem. Huh. Well. This didn't work. This is the danger of live coding. <laughs> hmm. You know what we can do is I have a fetch on my GitHub. And we can grab that directly, and I know that will work. So this is the, uh, the GitHub repository. That's me. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but so you can, you can go in here and get all the information that we are discussing. I'm just going to zoom down here to post meta and get this information. And so we're going to go back up here into, let's just go back up here into the database, hit SQL. And again, I'm going to change the prefix from WP to IUJAKDL. And we'll see what this gives us. Hopefully this one works. Excellent. So this is great because if you plug that in, then you get a chart of what the biggest meta keys are. And so here we have WP attachment metadata. Um, the underscore WP, that means it's WordPress. Uh, WP attached file. So we would expect to have a lot of information for those because WordPress just fakes that into every page. But SEO smart cache, uh, that's from a plugin. That's something else. Same thing with Radium, post views count. Radium is not WordPress, that's a plugin. So what we can do here is say, okay, these are the top 10 things that are taking up space in our database. I know this is a plugin. I'm not using it anymore. I want to delete it. 
Um, so you can go ahead and get rid of radium and clear those 14,000 rows. And what you can do there is a really simple statement. And you can just go back to SQL and hit just delete from the table where the Medicaid is that. And all you have to do, let's see. OK, so that's going to give us 14,000 like we saw before. So we know we're deleting the right thing. This is safe to do. You hit go. Yes, we're sure. Please, please don't break our site. And it will delete those 14,000 lines. So this is basically what you want to do. Is you want to get your rank list of everything that's going on in your post table, figure out what's fluff, what's from plugins I'm not using anymore. Um, and the same thing with the options table. Figure out what's the fluff, what can I get rid of. Um, and that's basically how to clean up your options table. And you can customize these queries and, and really get a lot of good information. And uh, that's the end of my talk. And I can take some questions. So I hope you can all take away uh, a really good theoretical basis for how this stuff works and then get it to the application. This might not have a lot to do with your talk, but um, with the, uh, uh, the MyISM and MoDB tables, yeah. what's your thinking of those going forward? Well, so I'm not an expert on it, but WordPress does use uh, NODB as the default from WordPress, I think, 4.4 on. Uh, just in my anecdotal experience, it is a little bit faster, and it gives you some benefits as far as being able to back up with uh, transactional stuff and have safer backups. Um, so yeah, definitely be using the more modern version, and I think that's going to be the default on any new WordPress site you're setting up. Um, and generally, it is pretty safe to convert if you are on MySQL 5.6. So as always, you know, take a backup, go in and change all the tables, make sure you didn't break anything. And yeah, so I would definitely go ahead and modernize that. Hi. So I'm wondering about moving a site to be internationalized. You know, if you had something with the, just the, the default encoding and you want to convert it to UTF-8, uh -huh. is, is there are there good commands you could use to like can you do that with just SQL, or do you have to do some sort of custom you know, PHP code plus SQL to convert your entire database? No, you can absolutely do it uh, in SQL, and you can switch from UTF-8 to UTF-8 and before, or whatever you want. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a command, and I think you do have to go table by table, because uh, I just did this the other day, which was a little bit aggravating. You can actually just go in in MySQL here, or in PHP MyAdmin, and you can go over to go into your table and hit operations, and you can just switch that over in the storage engine, or in the uh, collation, uh, and you can put that over into you know, whichever one of these you want to use. Um, and then you just hit go, and you're all done. So you can just do it that way. Uh, there is some code to do it, which I don't know offhand, but you can certainly just do it with uh, a couple lines of code. Uh, and just the thing to watch there that I've run into is if you have different versions of MySQL that you're moving between, 5.5, 5.6, uh, for instance, 5.6 uh, is not friendly with some of the new uh, UTF-8 MV4, or 5.5 is not friendly with MV, some of the MV4 versions, so you know, just make sure you're saving everything everywhere, make sure everything actually works in the right environment when you're moving things around, and, uh, and just go from there. I was just wondering if you know of a good plugin or easy method for um, routinely dumping uh, revisions. Like I have a site where there's a lot of like editorial process that happens when sure. goals are published, but then once they're published, the revisions aren't really needed anymore. So something that like you know just doesn't a regular job or a sure. process. Is well, that like a good plugin for that, or is that easiest just to do with the WordPress schedule task and some MySQL? Yeah, you know, uh, there's a couple ways to deal with that. One is that you can set the amount of revisions uh, in WP config. Uh, so you can set it to zero and not have any. Uh, you can set it to three, and so it never becomes a problem. Um, so that's one thing to just limit it from there. Uh, as far as clearing it, I don't know if there is a plugin that automatically clears it, but what you could do is just write out the SQL to delete revisions 
and just run it like with a cron job every day or every week or whatever it is, or you could go in with um, WP Optimize and just check that box and just do it once a week. You can set WP Optimize to delete, uh, to like leave the last week or last two weeks worth of revisions uh, also. So you can, um, so that's great. It's, uh, it's in the, I think it's in like the advanced settings. It's not, you just click the button on the home page, or on the, the main page, it will delete all of them, but you can set it to uh, the eight, a week or two. And then some of the other database cleaning uh, apps will do that, or uh, plugins will do that too. It'll let you uh, set like how many days or how many you know when you can. So it's, uh, it's a solved problem in a number of uh, plugins. Excellent. And yeah, and you could write a query that just says, look for stuff in the last, that's older than, you know, date X and, and all that stuff out. But yeah, that's great. That's an excellent plugin to use. Great. Any more? All set? All right. Good luck cleaning your databases. Thanks, everybody.